Here's check on stories we're following for you today on Robin Hood Radio. Our forecast from our meteorologist Pat Pedano calls for a sunny day today, mid-30s. Tomorrow, sun and clouds were into the lower 40s. On Thursday, sunny to partly cloudy in the mid-40s. And then on Friday, partly sunny, 50 to 55 degrees. Maybe some rain on New Year's Eve. We'll check the details on that forecast with Pat coming up in just a few minutes. Stories that we're following for you this morning. In the Republican American, a new playground at Kent Common Park received conditional approval by the selectmen on Thursday after the Park and Recreation Commission recommended awarding the bid to Creative Recreation for $100,000. Awarding of the bid is contingent upon the Planning and Zoning Commission approving the project to say that is in keeping with the town's plan of conservation development. Park and Rec requested bids on the playground proposal to replace the equipment at the town park and will use $100,000 in capital funds for for that expense, the bids were opened by First Selectman Gene Speck and Park and Recreation Director Jared Znesky on December 9th. Four firms submitted proposals by the deadline. Creative Recreation, which is a division of Miracle Playgrounds, presented a design that includes a small-sized play area for younger children, two-bay swing set with specific ADA swings, and a large play area for older children, which will be up to 10 feet high. Their proposal also includes a semi-shaped picnic table and bench, which will all be in the play area so parents can enjoy watching their children play without having to go over to the pavilion. The Kent Commons playground was previously geared towards younger preschool-age children, while the playground at Emory Park was designed for older children. Kent only has those two town parks. Staying in Kent, Kent officials looked at a five-year capital plan last week at the request of the departments that make up the five-year capital plan for 2023-24. The capital request total $8 million for the five years and the latest fiscal year 2027-28 to enter the draft plan at $3.3 million. The public will get a chance to comment on the plan when it's presented at the annual town meeting, which is coming up on January 19th at 7 p.m. The Board of Selectmen was presented with the plan, and the Board of Finance reviewed it the night before. Selectman Rufus Duram and First Selectman Gene Speck, when the Board needed to approve the plan, and said she'd need to research the date with the Treasurer, Barbara Herbst, the selectmen discussed that they would need to call a special meeting in January to discuss the capital plan before it was shared with townspeople. The selectmen changed the monthly meeting date to the fourth Wednesday in 2023. Out of Great Barrington and the Berkshire Eagle, women in South County who were the services of a nurse midwife will now only be able to get them in Pittsfield and not Great Barrington. Community Health Program this month ended its nurse midwife service through Barrington OBGYN and Fairview Hospital and laid off the midwife, citing several reasons. The move concerns a longtime area midwife. She says people in the area embrace a more holistic approach to birth and points to research that indicates women in childbirth fare better with midwifery care. CHP says the number of deliveries at Fairview was low and that more women require additional medical intervention with births and with an aging population there's a greater need for more complex gynecological care and surgeries that according to Dr. Andrew Beckwith OBGYN at the Great Barrington Practice who was appointed last month as CHP's chief medical officer the decision was made knowing there's still a local option at Berkshire OBGYN at Berkshire Medical Center, home to what Beckwith termed, quote, a very robust nurse midwifery program, end quote. The Great Barrington service ran for years, starting before CHP took over the practice in 2007. New York will soon begin enforcing its 2021 state law, establishing staffing minimums at nursing homes. Despite concerns the effort could turn the upstate hospital capacity crunch into a big crisis, nursing homes will face fines of up to $2,000 per day for failing to meet new staffing levels and related financial standards. About 75% of the state's roughly 600 nursing homes have been violating the standards as of earlier this year, according to industry officials. In other words, hundreds of nursing homes either must hire more staff 
or reduce their number of residents to avoid fines in the coming months. State health officials also can waive fines in specific communities based on a formula for declaring a local labor shortage. Enforcement of the staffing minimums has been previously delayed for nearly a year amid executive orders and legal challenges involving the law. Well, in upstate New York, the minimum wage will hit $14.20 by year's end. Lawmakers are looking for more. Workers outside New York City, Long Island, and Westchester County will see their minimum wage up to $14.20 an hour, up from $13.20 on December 31st. As part of an incremental increase schedule set by lawmakers, New York City and other downstate areas have already reached the $15 per hour threshold. After several annual increases, New York City was the first to reach $15 per hour. Hour in 2019 among both large and small employers. Taking a look at some events going on in our tri-state region, we have actually a pretty busy weekend for different activities going on in our area coming up this weekend. Crescendo presents a story of hope in the voice of the new world December 29th and 30th, that is Thursday the 29th at Trinity Church, Lime Rock Road in Lakeville, and Friday, December 30th, 5.30 at St. James Place in Great Barrington. For tickets, more information, you can contact them at crescendomusic.org or 860-435-4866. Now, the Salisbury Winter Sports Association Annual Junior Ski Jump Camp is being held this weekend. It'll be held Friday and Saturday, December 30th and 31st at Satry Hill, Indian Cave Road in Salisbury, Connecticut. Open the children ages 7 and up. For more information, you can contact Kenneth Barker at 860-806-0471 or email kennethsbarker at gmail.com. You can also visit jumpfest.org for more information. And coming up on Saturday, a Baroque Concerto Showcase is happening at 6 p.m. at the Mahewi Performing Arts Center. For more information, mahewi.org. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgan's at the Interlaken, where they feature daily specials for dinner, also a tapas menu and a regular menu, interlakenin.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Instagram, and by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will start off today at 33,552.00, the S&P 500 at 3895.50, and the NASDAQ at 11,134.00. We'll take a look at that tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.